Hi, I'm Bob. We will solve the problems for Chapter Eleven. Further issues in using OLS with time series data. Let's look at problem one. XT is a covariance stationary process. We define gamma h as the covariance between xt and xt plus h, so that the correlation between xt and xt plus h is gamma h divided by gamma zero. Since x is a covariance stationary process, the variance of x is a constant gamma zero for all time periods. The covariance between x t and x t plus h is gamma h. Using the formula for the correlation between x t and x t plus h, we obtain the result. Let's solve problem two. Let e t be a sequence of independent, identically distributed random variables with mean zero and variance one. Define a stochastic process x t by the following equation. In part one, find the expectation and the variance of x t. The slider of this depend on t. E t is an I I D sequence with mean zero and variance one, so the expected value of E in all time periods are zero. The variance of E in all time periods are one. The covariance of E between time t and time s is zero for t not equal to s. Therefore. The expected value of x t is zero. The variance of x t can be written out as variance terms and covariance terms. The covariance terms are all zero, so what is left are the three variance terms. They are constants; they do not depend on t. In part two. We will show the correlation between x t and x t plus one, and the correlation between x t and x t plus two. We know that the variance of x in time t, time t plus one, and time t plus two are all three over two. The covariance between x t and x t plus one is minus three over four. So the correlation between them is minus one over two. We can also obtain the covariance between x t and x t plus two, and their correlation. In part three, we can show that when h is greater than two, the covariance between x t and x t plus h. Is zero, so the correlation between them is also zero. In part four, we will show that x t is an asymptotically uncorrelated process. An asymptotically uncorrelated process is a covariance stationary process where the correlation between x t and x t plus h approaches zero as h approaches infinity. First, x t is a covariance stationary process because its expectation and variance are constant. And the covariance between x t and x t plus h depends only on h, and not on t. From part three, we know that as h becomes greater than two, 
the correlation becomes zero. So xt is an asymptotically uncorrelated process. Let's find answers to problem 3. Suppose that a time series process yt is generated by yt equals z plus et, where et is an iid sequence with mean 0 and variance sigma e squared. The random variable z does not change over time. It has mean 0 and variance sigma z squared. Assume that each et is uncorrelated with z. In part 1, find the expected value and variance of yt. Do your answers depend on t? The expected value of yt is 0. The variance of yt is the sum of sigma z squared and sigma e squared. They do not depend on t. Impact 2. Find the covariance between yt and yt plus h for any t and h. Is the time series process yt covariance stationary? We can write the covariance between yt and yt plus h into four terms. Because z is uncorrelated with e in each time period, the middle two terms are zero. The last term is also zero because et is an iid sequence. So the covariance between yt and yt plus h equals sigma z squared. Since yt has a constant expected value and variance, and the covariance does not depend on t, it is covariance stationary. In part 3, we use the correlation definition to show that it equals sigma z squared divided by the sum of sigma z squared and sigma e squared. In part 4, does yt satisfy the intuitive requirement for being asymptotically uncorrelated? Explain. No, the correlation between yt and yt plus h is a constant. It does not approach zero as h approaches infinity. It is not asymptotically uncorrelated. Let's solve problem 4. Let yt follow a random walk with y0 equals 0. Show the correlation between yt and yt plus h. We first write yt as y0 plus the sum of e t minus i as i goes from 0 to t minus 1. It is clear that the variance of yt equals t times sigma e squared and the variance of yt plus h equals t plus h times sigma e squared. For the covariance between yt and yt plus h, we can show that only from e1 to et matters. The covariance equals t times sigma e squared. Therefore, the correlation between yt and yt plus h can be expressed as the square root of t over t plus h. Thank you so much for doing the problems with me today. See you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.